morning, this is Bernie from Tarawa Wellness Clinic and welcome once again to Cooking with Bernie and being in my kitchen. So today I am doing a sauerkraut. Now sauerkraut, as a lot of you may know, is a form of fermented cabbage and the reason it has become so popular again is that as more and more people are aware of gut health, um, sauerkraut and other fermented things like kimchi, um, um, my brain's just gone blank, and things like kombucha, they are all coming back into vogue, and rightly so, because they help with the process of creating good gut bacteria. It provides um, bacteria in our stomach, which we need for our immune health and our skin health. The reason I'm featuring sauerkraut is that it actually contains a strain of probiotic called Lactobacillus and that's a name that's often known, you see it in your yogurts um, and it's quite a common probiotic. So this morning I want to show you how incredibly easy it is to actually make your own sauerkraut at home. It's quite convenient to take it off the shelf in the supermarket. But it comes at quite a price and I just want to just show you how easy it is to do and perhaps save you a lot of money in the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my Thermomix. Now I am processing it in my Thermomix. However, if you do not have a Thermomix, all you need to do is you need to chop up your cabbage or um, process it, just pulse it in your food processor if you have one. If you don't have any of those, it's fine. You literally will use your two hands and a sharp knife. You'll still get the same um, end result. It's just that I have a Thermomix and so I have the ability to chop it up in a couple of seconds. So join me as I step over to my um, other bench top and I'm going to show you literally how quickly it is to chop it in the Thermomix. Let's go over. Welcome back. So here we go. So I have bought just a plain white cabbage. I got mine from the local farmer's market and I do encourage you to go to your farmer's market. The produce is so incredibly fresh and it's also good to know that you're supporting a local farmer. Um, the miles as well are a lot quicker from when they've actually brought it out of the ground to when you serve it on your table and those are really important in terms of nutrition um, and the nutrients that you get out of it. So what you need to do is you need to chop up, because I'm doing it in my Thermomix, I need to just chop it up into little blocks. If you were doing this by hand, this process would be exactly the same, excepting you would now be chopping this up into like ribbons. So like you've seen me do it over here, you would literally just make it go into ribbons so that you would be using smaller pieces like that. But I'm chopping mine into, oops, into my um, Thermomix. And it's normally about a quarter, um, a quarter ca cabbage, because as I said, that was only half, and this is close enough. They need me, hmm, I just need to get some salt. So we're going to put in, um, it's calling for one and a half teaspoons, but because I am halving the recipe, I'm just going to put in three quarters of a teaspoon. I'm going to put it in my mixing bowl and I'm going to put the speed up to five and I am going to pause the video because it is a little bit noisy. Now I'm going to transfer, oops, it hasn't chopped it all together. So this just shows you when you are working with a Thermomix, you do still need to, um, it's still you in control of the machine. So I'm going to go back. And I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm just going to pause it again. Okay, now I'm going to 
add, so there are some rough fits in there and I'm actually going to leave them because they will break down. So I'm going to now pop back over to my bench and I'm going to show you what we do with this chopped cabbage. So let's head back to my bench top. Alright, so I'm putting this in here. Now some of the pieces are a little bit bigger. And that's okay. Now comes the messy bit. So make sure you're doing this with clean hands. And all you are going to do is you are literally going to squish this with your hands. Now what you are looking for is you want to get the cabbage juice released at the bottom of the bowl. And the reason we want the cabbage juice is that is where the brine is, that's where the um, preserving moisture is that's going to prevent this from actually going off and turning into a really bad science experiment. So you're just massaging the cabbage and as you can see if I squeeze it there's already some juice in there but we want quite a bit and I'm just eyeballing that bottle and I think maybe that bottle was too big. And this is such an ancient way of preserving all your ways of preserving things, your pickles, um, you know, your gherkins, those are baby um, cucumbers. Those are all very ancient ways of um, preserving vegetables. I would have not really loved to have lived in those times, but in a way I would have loved to have been there to figure, you know, to see how they figured it out, that this was a good way to do things. So look at that, there's quite a bit more juice in there now and you'll probably do this for about maybe five minutes a few minutes now when you are making sauerkraut you have so many options you don't have to just have white cabbage you can put in fennel seeds cumin seeds you can put in a range of different things you can put in some nori which is seaweed dried seaweed it's honestly you can use so many different options um, just experiment now I am going to bottle that I'm quite happy that there's enough moisture here but I am actually good whoops I am actually going to go and get a smaller bottle because I forgot by squishing it like this that it condenses so I'm just going to pop you on pause and I'll come back and I'll show you how we bottle it so that um, you can just see how easy it is. I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I found a smaller bottle. I had a much bigger bottle because I've forgotten that I'm actually making only half the recipe. And you'll just put it in. You can use a spoon if you don't like the texture. Just push it down. Look at those juices. Keep going. You want it. Right, so now what I'm going to do, mm, I might actually need to take some out. I always do this. Let's see how we go. Take a bottle that is a smaller diameter than the bottle that you're putting it in and push it. Can you see how the bubbles have come to the surface? That is brilliant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to obviously clean the bottle, I'm going to put it on a little tray and I'm actually going to store it in a dark cupboard away from the light and it takes about three to five days before it's ready for me to seal it. I'm going to go back every day and I'm going to push this bottle down so that these fluids come up to the top and when this gets less that is when I actually know that it's ready to put the lid on and then you can pop it in the fridge and you can eat it within about a week. So I'm going to clean my bottle, put it in my, I use a hot water cupboard in New Zealand, but any cupboard where it is dark away from the sun and it's not gonna get bumped over. So I will be back in a few days time just to show you the progress of my sauerkraut and then how I bottle it or close it up when it's ready. So I hope you found this part of the video 
very informative and show you how easy it is to make sauerkraut from home. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, this is Bernie back again from Taronga Wellness Clinic and as promised, it is now day three since I made the sauerkraut and I just wanted to show you how the fermentation process is going. So I've been coming every day and pressing down my little bubble, my bottle into the juices and as you can see those juices are coming up and as you can see they've come over the plate but there's considerably less so I reckon we should be probably good to go in another two days so I will be back in a um, couple of days and we'll relook that and see if it's ready to bottle so as you can see there's a lot less juice than when I first put the um, cabbage in on Saturday and that's all been going out every day as I've been pressing. Just once a day, I've been pressing that bottle down to make sure that those juices are released. So watch the space. I'll be back in two days' time. Bye. Hi there. Welcome back to Bernie's Kitchen. And this is the final segment of my making sauerkraut. So it's been about five days. And if you have a look, you remember when I squeezed it up it came bubbling over the top well there's hardly anything there and you can see the remnant of what was coming up as I was squeezing it so there's a tiny tiny little bit of juice I am going to leave that I'm just going to give it a bit of a stir and all you have to do now is literally bottle it and I like to just label it so that everybody in the family knows what it is and I've got a date on it and I'm going to clean the bottle because it's got all the sticky residue from when the juices were running over and then put it in the fridge and have about a tablespoon every day so how simple was that? so easy, so affordable why don't you give it a go and let me know how you get on thanks for watching, bye!